Tuesday, 29th of October, Walrus Bay. Dear child, Woken this morning by wolves in my cabin. They had one of my pillowcases and they wanted to trade it for some of my dried fish. After realizing that I was not going to be bullied into parting with any of our provisions, they stole two gramophone records and a pair of braces and fled. What use these will be to them, I have no idea, for they have no record player and no trousers to hold up. Later on, Rue and I went to look for driftwood at Blue Whale Bay. Whilst we were gathering wood on the beach, some seagulls fell out of the sky, frozen solid. I packed them side by side, like a row of sardines, into my golf bag and took them home. I laid them by the stove, and a couple of hours later, they had thawed out and come back to life. They were confused at first and flew round my cabin, knocking over books and smashing plates and trying to fly through the windows to get outside. Eventually, they calmed down, sat in a huddle on the floor, and began to preen themselves. After they had thoroughly rearranged their feathers, they became hungry and waddled about the cabin looking for food. They were very hungry. They found the dried fish and ate the lot. They didn't like porridge, so they left that, but they finished off the rest of the potatoes and beans. They found Rue's roasted peanuts and fought over them, and then polished them off. One even tried to eat the packet. So now, as I write this to you, they are sleeping at last. Rue has just made some porridge, and I think after we have eaten, we shall have an early night. We have no choice, really, as one of the seagulls has broken my lantern, and it's getting too dark to see. Good night, child. Your grandfather. Wednesday, 30th of October, Walrus Bay. Dear child, the seagulls went on their way this morning. They left behind a terrible mess. Broken plates and dishes strewn across the floor, and everything covered in white feathers and bird poo. Rue found the whole incident most distressing and said, that I should have left them where I'd found them. We spent the morning tidying up after them. I can always tell when Rue is in a bad mood because she constantly follows me with her broom and asks me to move. No matter where I went, that was where she wanted to sweep next. She followed me around the cabin, pushing a big pile of feathers and broken plates around with her broom. She wasn't picking it up. She was just pushing it from one side of the room to the other. I decided to get out my one iron and go golfing along the snow fairway. It is a difficult course to play. There are two crevasses on each side of the course, and if you hit your ball into them, it is lost forever. At the end of the snow fairway, there is a red flag that marks where the hole is. You have to get your ball into the hole in as few strokes as possible. Unfortunately, there is nobody I can play golf with here. Rue does not like golf, and Jackson does not see the point of whacking a ball around in the snow. So I play on my own. My first shot went into the sea. The second went down one of the crevasses. As I am running low on golf balls, I decided to play just one last ball before I packed in. I took my aim at the red flag, kept my eye on the ball, and gave it a mighty thwack with the one iron. The ball rose high into the blue sky, hung still for a moment as if deciding what to do next, and then fell in a graceful arc out of sight 
beyond the crevasses. It was a magnificent shot, and I set off after it immediately to play the next. I went carefully past the crevasses, because if you fall down there, you're a goner. Then, in the distance ahead, I spied a small black shape lying in the snow. As I got closer, I realized that it was a little penguin, unconscious but still alive. Beside it lay my golf ball. I wrapped the penguin in my coat, zipped it up in my golf bag, and set off back to the cabin as quickly as I could. I laid it by the stove in the cardboard box. I feel very guilty about the affair and pray that it gets better. Rue and I had an argument when we went down to Walrus to buy more food. She said, Why didn't I invite the whole of the Arctic into our home and be done with it? We could fill the place with sea lions, Arctic foxes, and seabirds, she said, and sleep outside. I had to tell her to be a little more caring for her fellow animals. She said they didn't care for her, so she wasn't going to care for them. Penguin still unconscious. Tell your mother that I am well. I have thrown away the pills Dr. Strangler gave me and feel better without them. A full moon tonight and many stars. The stars seem to shine brighter here in the Arctic. Jackson says that it is because the air is cleaner. You could see all the way across the valley, right up to Great Bear Ridge. It was like daylight, only more blue. The wolves howled all night. A melancholy sound, lonelier than anything I have ever heard in my life. Your grandfather. Friday, 32nd of October, Walrus Bay. Hip, hip, hurrah, and three cheers. The little penguin has woken up. It has a slight bump on its head, but apart from that, it is perfectly well. It ate six dried fish for breakfast and went back to sleep. Went outside to get wood for the stove, and it struck me that something was wrong. At first, I could not make up my mind what was wrong. Then I noticed the sky. One half of it was a deep blue, and the other half was a bright yellow. But even stranger than that was the sun and the moon. They were side by side. The sun had risen, as it always does, but the moon hadn't gone where it normally goes during the day. It had stayed. I rushed back into the cabin, and then I noticed the calendar. It said that today was the 32nd of October, which it can't be right, as October has only 31 days, and today should be the 1st of November told Rue, and she said that she couldn't care less how many days there were supposed to be in October. Every day was the same to her, and days shouldn't have numbers attached to them anyway. Something very strange is happening, though, despite what Rue says. I think we should set off as soon as possible for Great Bear Ridge, before it gets any stranger. I started to pack immediately, sent Rue down to the mailing station with a list of all the things we needed. She came back an hour later and said most of the food had gone. It seems as if everyone is leaving. Cannot decide what to do with the penguin. I feel responsible for him, but... He does eat an awful lot of food. I cannot leave him here, though. I shall take him with us 
until we find a penguin colony to join. Early night tonight. The wolves are very quiet. Tomorrow, come what may, we will head for Great Bear Ridge. Do not worry about us, child. We will be careful. I have my one iron, and I have rue. Sweet dreams, your grandfather. Saturday, 33rd of October, halfway up the gentle slopes. Dear child, after harnessing Rue up to the trolley packed to the brim with food, tent, sleeping bags, the portable stove, and pots and pans, I closed the door to my cabin and we set off at once toward the gentle slopes. I did not look back in case I changed my mind. We met the wolves on the way up to the slopes. I told them they could have my cabin and whatever else was left behind, but they shook their heads and said they were going north. One of them said something about the call of the wild. I found this as strange as the sky, which this morning was a pale green, and wondered what had happened to bring about such a change in them. For weeks they had lain around in their shack drinking old sock, and now, suddenly, they were making the difficult journey north. They ran across the snow toward Wolf Point, and then I lost sight of them. They seemed different. More like it must have been before the mailing station came. Wolves. Further up, we met Jackson, at work on a giant walrus. I told him we were leaving for Great Bear Ridge. I gave him a few letters to post for us, thanked him, and we set off again. By lunchtime, we had reached the gentle slopes, and we started the long climb up. Once I looked back and saw the cabin, a tiny speck in the distance, and it brought a lump to my throat. Rue was pulling the trolley with great enthusiasm, no doubt driven along by the thought of ice cream, and so by tea time we were halfway up to the top. We stopped and pitched the tent crawled inside, and lit the stove. After a large meal, we got into our sleeping bags. Penguin didn't, as he is used to sleeping without one. By tomorrow, we shall have reached the top. Very sleepy, your grandfather. Sunday, 34th of October, further up the gentle slopes. Dearest child, a terrible day. Whilst we were taking the tent pegs out, a large gust of wind blew the tent away. We watched it float off over Blue Whale Bay. Fortunately, I had taken the sleeping bags out earlier, or else it would have been a complete disaster. We carried on up the gentle slopes. The wind started to blow harder. I tied us all to a piece of rope so that none of us would blow away. We made slow progress. At times, Great Bear Ridge seemed to get closer and closer, but just as I thought we would reach it, it would get further away again. It must be like those mirages you see in the desert. The sky changed from lilac to deep crimson, and it started to snow. We stopped and made an igloo, 
cutting out blocks of snow with my one iron to make the walls. The wind grew more fierce, and we had just finished the igloo when the storm hit. It blew the trolley up into the air, taking Rue with it. I only just managed to catch one of the wheels with my golf club and pull her back down. I grabbed her in my arms and undid the harness, and the trolley flew off down the mountain. Tonight, we went through what we had left inside the igloo. We still have the stove, so we can cook. But we have very little food left. Just five fish and some porridge. That's all. Only one sleeping bag. Everything else was in the trolley. Very despondent tonight. I can hear the storm outside. Rue is wrapped up in the sleeping bag. Penguin is asleep by my legs. When the storm is over, we will walk up to Great Bear Ridge and everything will be fine. I miss the wolves. Your grandfather. Monday, 35th of October. Igloo. Dear child. The storm has not stopped. Poked our noses out to have a look and nearly had them blown away. The sky was as black as coal, and the wind was moaning in a horrible way. Stuck in the igloo all day. Played I Spy with Rue to keep her spirits up, but there were not many things in the igloo, so the game was very short. Sheared out two of the fish, and a little of the porridge between the three of us. The situation is grim. Child, you know that I am old, don't you? That is one of the reasons why I went away. I have to see the polar bears before it is too late. The snow caps are melting. The polar bears have nowhere else to go. This is the last place on earth for them. When I have seen them, we shall come back. Don't worry, child. We know what we are doing. With love, your grandfather. Tuesday, 36th of October. Igloo. Dear child, the storm has not stopped. We now have only three fish left and a little porridge. I read Rue the last chapter of David Copperfield, and then we burnt it. How I long to get up and stretch my legs. But I know that if we went out in this storm, we would be lost forever. Too cold to write any more. Perhaps tomorrow the storm will stop, and we shall finish our journey. Tell your mother that all is well. I don't want her to worry. Your grandfather. Wednesday, 37th of October, Igloo. Dear child, we now have only one fish left. Your grandfather. Thursday, 38th of October, Igloo. Dear child, thank heaven for Rue. This evening she produced a tin of macaroni and cheese, which she said she had been saving for a special occasion. We all sat round the little stove and watched it cook. It was the best thing I have ever eaten. Storm still going strong as ever. All three of us in sleeping bag to keep warm. Bless you, child. Your grandfather. Friday, 39th of October, Igloo. 
dear child. Very weak. So this letter will be very short. We have no food left. The storm has stopped. In the wind I am sure that I hear voices. I thought I heard the wolves howling. The three of us huddled together. Child, do not worry. I know the polar bears will find us. I feel more tired than I have ever felt in my life. I shall dream of the polar bears tonight. Rue says she will dream about ice cream. Tell your mother that I will be home soon. Your grandfather. Saturday, 40th of October, Igloo. Dear child, the storm suddenly stopped, and we all crawled out of the igloo. I only took my one iron and a few golf balls with me. The sky wasn't purple or green. It was just blue. We walked the last bit up to Bear Ridge under the warm sun. Penguin walked beside me while Rue ran ahead, as dogs always do. At last, we reached the top. Here I am, child, on Great Bear Ridge, and it's like I dreamt it would be, only better. The wolves are here, and I'm happy to see them. The whales are here, too, swimming amongst the icebergs. And there are penguins and seals. But most of all, the polar bears are here. I can see them with their cubs playing in the snow. I have not spoken to them yet, but I will. Sleep tight, my child. This is a beautiful world, and it goes on forever. I am tired now and must stop writing. Tell your mother that I love her. Shush, Rue. The polar bears are here. Hush, Rue. In the morning, we will search for ice cream for you. Ice cream for Rue.